God was telling the nation of Israel that each one of them, their, his covenant people, should honor their parents. Now, it's interesting that that commandment comes in the middle of the Ten Commandments. That's the one that kind of stands as a hinge. There's ten of them, and the fifth one, honor thy father and thy mother, comes with a promise that your days in the land may be long. Now, they were about to enter the land. They hadn't entered the land yet. And God gives them ten commandments. The first four have to do with him, relationship with God. And the last six have to do with themselves and interpersonal relationships. But in the middle of that is the great commandment of honoring, that we remember today, of honoring our mother. Now the word honor, you know, I gave you a little bit of a hint of the meaning of it, is kavad, chavad, which is very close to kavod, which means glory, or can also be translated something weighty, something weighty. Now, I don't want to say, this is not to mean that your mother is heavy. She ain't heavy. She's your mother. And if she is, you need to bear that burden. You need to carry that weight, right? But interestingly, in the, in the, in the Bible times, weight, in fact, physical weight, you know, this kind of weight, a heavy person was considered a person of glory. <laughs> no more, you know. Now, uh, you know, we poor... Uh, Portly people uh, are not very popular these days, right? You know the the image that's given in uh, in in you know in uh, in the television is that thin is good and thin is good. And you're always trying to get thin. But it's interesting that that word uh, weight is closely related to glory. Uh, that's the word that's translated honor. Honor your mother and your father. In other words, give weight to them, consider them. And I just want to tell you two things today about that. How do we give weight and how do we honor our mother on this day? Honor, first of all, implies that we listen. We listen to them. We hear them. Because it is one of the ways that God communicates to us. It's through our mothers. Now, I know that today there's a lot of, you know, a lot of woundedness and maybe brokenness. Some of you maybe had mothers that weren't very communicative. Maybe, they, maybe your mom was distant. Maybe your mother was somebody that maybe brought pain and there's, there are mother wounds in your soul. God wants to heal that. And I believe that that was the, the nature of the word and the reason for the word that Christina had from the beginning that was whispered in my ear. God wants to heal you. But in all that your mother was, in all of her brokenness, she was... In, in every sense, a gift from God. And you know, God wants to he bring a healing that is not just restorative to your mom, but also to you. Um, one of the things, you know, that we received when we went away on this trip to Scotland and, and Ireland, we were gone for 16 days, is that one of the, the, the leaders of the group, a woman, an Irish woman, said to us, came and gave us a word, and the word was that God was cleansing our bloodlines. Cleansing our bloodlines. And I want to release that to this whole church. <laughs> because in Christ, <laughs> God is cleansing because of you, because of Christ in you. All of your bloodlines can be considered blessing and not curse if you would receive that. Regardless of maybe how wounded you might be because of your mom. So take a moment today and communicate Contact, call your mom. Another way that, and, and to finish, well, I'm going to get done at 1 o'clock here just as promised because I know all of you have plans and things to do and I hope it includes honoring your mom. But another way to honor your mom is to take care of your mom. To take care of your mom. I was, if you, if you read the Miami Herald, I was really saddened by what I read. I believe it was late last week that there was a report from one of the assisted care facilities in Miami-Dade County, and they discovered these abandoned uh, folks, you know, somebody's mom or dad. And the way that they were treated was just, it was just beyond unspeakable. 
Uh, one older man was just left to die with pneumonia, untreated, covered with filthy rags. It, it is indicative of a society that is unraveling. One of the reasons that the Jewish culture has lasted for so many years, 3,500 years since the command was given, is that in the Jewish culture, that, the honoring of mother and father is taken very seriously. As we ignore that command, everything unravels around that. You see, because it's in a home where there's honoring, that we can learn to honor. If there's honor in our homes, then, then we learn to honor, and we can honor in our workplace, we can honor in the community. And society is blessed by what comes from the family unit. That was in the heart of God to do that. So today, no matter how wounded you might be about mom, or no matter how long it's been since you've actually called her, take a moment, call her, and bless her, and tell her how grateful you are. You see, it's your words that will bring, your words of healing that will bring transformation to, to the relationship. It's also, you know, I want to, I want to end with this. It, it is no accident, again, that what we saw today here, the outpouring of the Spirit of God. How many were touched by, by the Spirit of God today? You know, God did something here significant. This today was a milestone. May 11th, 1980, in the history of the vineyard, was a milestone. That day, you know, the founder of the vineyard, John Wimber, stood watching this whole scenario unravel in front of him and you can see the in the wonder of today's technology is you can actually google that you can google mother's day 1980 uh lonnie frisbee or just mother's day 1980 and it wasn't even a vineyard at that point because it was a calvary chapel church at that point and john had invited this young hippie upstart named lonnie frisbee lonnie calls the young people forward and he says, come Holy Spirit, May 11th, 1980. In the days that followed, John was trying to process what had happened there because he had never seen anything like this before. And he received prophetic words from people that didn't even know what had happened. Now, this is prior to the internet and Facebook. And some guy out of the blue, as John was pondering what happened here last night, he's trying to find in the Bible where it says, come Holy Spirit. And can somebody, is that a prayer that we can pray? John didn't know that. Nobody had ever prayed a prayer like that in his understanding. And Wimber was a guy that knew the church at large. He had been all over the church in the United States. He was a church consultant out of Fuller Theological Seminary. And out of the blue, a pastor in Denver calls him. And I, I think the call happened like around 3 o'clock in the morning as John was staying up all night pondering what had happened. And this guy, Tom Stipe, who was still a pastor in Denver at a Calvary Chapel, called and he said, John, I don't know what happened at your church last night, but God told me to tell you that was me. That's history. That's in the books. Nobody can deny that that happened. And a lot of folks that saw that, you know, what they thought was kind of pandemonium. A lot of people said, well, I don't find that kind of stuff in my Bible. And a lot of folks, you know, took their black, you know, leather-bound Schofields and tucked it under their arm and headed for the door. And some of the elders of the church said to John, and in the days after that, they said, well, we, we don't want this, that kind of stuff, that kind of hooey. That's the, the respect and the honor that the Holy Spirit gets in some circles. Forget the fact that 300 kids have been blasted by the Holy Spirit, and many of them had gotten saved that day. And fallen under the power of God. And you know, John met them in a restaurant a couple days after that. And he said to them, he, he brought the books and the checkbook from the church. He brought it all, placed it in front of them. And he said, here, you can keep all of this. I just want to follow God. I want to follow what the Holy Spirit is doing. Take the religion. Take the trappings. Take all the, everything. It's yours. And really, the rest was history. After that, John teamed up with um, with Ken Gullickson, a pastor in Santa Monica, and the Vineyard Movement was born on Mother's Day, 1980. A decade later, another move of God in Toronto would begin that would be called the Father's Blessing. 
it was characterized by people getting touched by the power of God, and they felt just the tangible presence of God. From all denominations and all backgrounds, all over the world, people came to Toronto, and people were changed and transformed by the power of God. You know, all moves of God and all revivals have their critics. That's just part of history. They were present back on the day of Pentecost on that day when some of the folks that saw what was happening pointed to it and said, these men are drunk. Peter stood up and he said, no, they're not. It's too early. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. This is that which was spoken of. And then he said, what we're seeing here is a manifestation of what God will do at the end of the age. You see, he, he doesn't want us to just know about that. He wants us to experience the power of God. And so today, on Mother's Day, I'm going to ask if you would stand. I'm going to just give a blessing here and release you. Now, many of you maybe need prayer. There were many words given uh, during the, the ministry time and the worship time. Maybe you didn't get a chance to come up. There was a word for healing. Um, first of all, emotional healing, woundedness. And if I'm missing something, please let me know. There was a, a word for eyesight that the Lord is healing eyes today. Many times when God is about to do something, he gives words of knowledge through his prophets in order to reveal what he wants to do. Was there something else that I missed? Feet. There's, there's healing. Blood pressure. God spoke to me clearly about blood pressure. Some of you, your blood pressure has already dropped, you know, 10 millimeters of mercury or however they, they, today, just receive that. Just by faith. How do you get it? How do you get, how do you take it? By faith. By faith. By faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen? God, you know, God wants to touch you with the love of the Father and also the mother heart of God. It's that nurturing heart of God that's manifest. If you want to know what God's love is like, look at your mom on her best days. 